Welcome back, everybody. Derek Sue, your East Oakland advocate. Well, I want to let you folks know this is already March, and at the end of March comes house buying season. A lot of folks are going to start uh, listing their homes uh, on the market for sale, and so uh, we're going to see what happens. And, and when the feds uh, last week uh, said that they're going to be continuing to raise mortgage interest rates, that means that this year it's going to be a really down, down buying season for home buyers and home sellers. And, and so uh, I've already hit the internet and started searching Oakland uh, for single family homes. What I'm looking for is something no more than a uh, thousand square feet at the, at the most and at the very least 600 square feet. One bed, one bath is all I need. But then I'm also looking at two bed and one bath. So the options are there. And, and there are, as of uh, today, there were already over a 12 listings that are really close to my price range. And my price range that, if you remember the last time I, I uh, was here, I said I was going to be about 300000 uh, for the the uh, final price of the home, but I've actually gone up to five hundred thousand. That that gives uh, me a little more flexibility. Uh, it's uh, out of those uh, a little better than a dozen uh, listings. Half of those were condominiums, and condominiums uh, are multifamily uh, dwellings. Uh, not my favorite. Uh, not my first choice. In fact, that's one of my least desirable choices. I prefer a single family home uh, with a, a garage. I don't have to have a garage, but if, if the home has a garage or at least a driveway, uh, that's what I would be looking for. Also a single level. And so everything that I've been looking at in terms of single family homes are single level. And so, uh, like I said, uh, with my age comes some mobility issues. And so stairs become an enemy and, and a real task as we age. I watch my grandmother, I watch my uncles struggle with stairs and staircases. And so um, I always worried about them falling backwards, tumbling backwards uh, down the stairs because they usually had a really good hold of the handrails. And, and so uh, that's a, a concern of mine and, because I watch my grandparents and my parents struggle with stairs. And, and so uh, to alleviate and minimize the impact, of, because I'm uh, highly likely going to be living by myself. I will be living single. I will not uh, have a roommate because uh, a lot of you folks have been asking, well, why don't you get a roommate help cut the cost down? Well, that's because I'm a very particular type of person. I'm a very neat, fastidious uh, type of person. And um, if you're not very similar and neat and tidy like I am, it isn't going to work out. And I know that for a fact because my first wife was a slob. She couldn't get a single plate to the kitchen. I had to pick up everything behind that that slob. And she was a horrible housekeeper. She didn't keep house at all. In fact, she was uh, she was one of my my first biggest disappointments and mistakes in life. And I ended up divorcing her after only 14 months of marriage. That's how bad it was. And she also caused me to get into financial ruins and, because she was her, her family and her associates were all in on uh, taking me for a ride because uh, what she was doing, she was a racist. She was a, a, a subtle one, we'll say, because she wasn't uh, so much a racist to my face, but she was horrible to all of my friends of color. In fact, towards the end of our relationship, I did not have any friends of color. In fact, all of my friends of color told me, if you continue to be with her, we will no longer be friends with you. And so, and then also she alienated my parents. So that was a, a real big uh, deal. And then some other issues came up that, that 
finalized everything for me and I walked out. I literally walked out. I said, you can have the home because you're going to go bankrupt or you're going to get foreclosed on when the loan, the balloon loan comes due. And that was only three years down the road. And that balloon payment was going to be $149,000 on top of all the interest that we paid at 15% for that $149,000. And I got taken to, to the cleaners, number one, by her and her family, number two, by the crooked realtor that, that told me that it was a safe investment that the home will appreciate in five years enough so that I could qualify for a refinancing loan, which was an absolute lie. And that's why I don't trust people. I don't trust roommates. I've had uh, a few roommates. In fact, uh, I just answered a, uh, a question about a previous roommate that I, I lived with for nearly a year. And that person, only reason why I tolerate it tolerated that was because I needed to be at an address for the court and for the judge. And so uh, that friend uh, did me a favor on that part. But then the sad part was, is that that friend also had a drug addiction called meth. And that was a real, real problem. Number one, uh, he already had created a red flag. Uh, on 911 because he made so many calls while he was under the influence of meth that now there was a red flag uh, on that uh, uh, telephone number so that when he called uh, 911, uh, it would come up a red flag. And in fact, uh, I ended up talking to one of the 911 operators because police were actually at the door to arrest him and I told the uh, 911 operator, yes, he is on meth and uh, he's not in his right mind right now. So uh, what she did, she went ahead, let that go, recalled the officers and um, my roommate, I uh, convinced to settle down and I took his phone away and he, I told him to go to bed, stay there, and if he got out of bed, I would make sure that I would make I would put him back in that bed, and he would not be moving again. That's the kind of uh, situation that we had in, in that, and so that's why I'm done with roommates. Also, that was one of the examples, and then a previous one. I before uh, I actually became homeless, just before becoming homeless, I had. Uh, I was dating a woman and she, she was no better. She was just as crooked. She tried to steal one of my guns. In fact, she shot at me with my own gun. And so that was a roommate from hell. And, uh, uh there was a lot of court case, uh, about that. We, we went before the judge several times. And then finally, uh, to keep things quiet, the judge told us to, go our separate ways, don't contact each other. And that's what I did. I never contacted her again. And in fact, she was reprimanded by the judge in front of everybody because uh, of the gun issue. I did get that gun back, but it took me uh, nearly a year to get that back. And then also uh, paying for um, the uh, background check to so that they could make sure that the state of California could make sure that I was legitimate and that I could actually have my gun back. My license was irrelevant. The gun was in the, in the hands of Oakland Police Department. And so I did get the gun back without any issue. Uh, did cost me a little bit of money. I've never been in contact with that uh, roommate from hell ever again. And folks, if you say that I, I get lonely, no, I don't. Because of all of those things that have happened in the past with roommates, that's why living single is actually better for me. Uh, that way nobody gets hurt because uh, I did end up hurting uh, that one um, roommate. Uh, I ended up 
uh, knocking him completely out, dragging his big ass, putting him back in bed, and then uh, explaining why he had a big old split in his head in the morning. And so shortly after that, I moved out because I told him I'm done with this. Uh, I'm done with your meth issue and everything. That's why I never went back. I had to get out of there for my own sanity and my own safety. And then also so that I wouldn't hurt my friend so severely. So uh, anyway, back to going on uh, house hunting. Uh, I'm going to be paying all of the, the uh, cost of the home up front. And so once I find something, I'm going to put the entire amount down and I'm going to be pushing for a 25 day escrow, 25 day escrow. So that means that whatever home that, that I select, it's going to need to be empty already. It needs to be in move in condition. And I'm not, I'm not going to be doing the non-contingency crap like you know, we've seen over the last two decades uh, because that's not going to work. You're, these a lot of the homes that are going to be in this price range are going to need a lot of work. And so uh, an inspection, a house inspection, home inspection is absolutely critical so that you know that the foundation is good, that wiring is good, that uh, they're, they're, um, the things that are concerning in terms of dry rot and... and uh, structural issues are dealt with and that the previous homeowner pays for that instead of what what the norm has been now is like you fix it and then that's not going to work and, and the market has turned it's a it's a buyer's market more of a buyer's market now than a seller's market and then with a flood of new listings coming on at the end of the month into april and may I sh I'm sure I'm going to be able to find something here in Oakland within the next year. Uh, again, like I said, uh, a roommate is not an option. Uh, the least desirable of uh, my housing situations would be uh, in a multifamily high rise. That's that is the absolute worst situation for me. And a single family home. There are a lot of single family homes throughout Oakland that are in. Uh, older condition that could use some some uh, love and regener uh, rejuvenation and so that's what i plan on doing and one of the things that i truly plan on doing is investing in off-grid solar for the first part i am going to cut the umbilical cord of pg e electric from that home i am going to have a self-sufficient off-grid fully powered single family home here in Oakland. And you're going to say, whoa, how are you going to accomplish that? Well, it's not that difficult. Because uh, what I'm going to do, the way that it's going to be wired, I'm just going to be shutting PG&E off. PG&E uh, will be off at the breaker, uh, the uh, service breakers. And then another set will be switched on which will be the off-grid solar and then the so off-grid solar powers everything in the home all of my electric my stove my heating my lighting and everything else and and i'm figuring right around twelve thousand kilowatts uh is what will be uh, needed for powering a, a single family home with a one or two bedrooms because I don't use a whole lot of electricity to begin with. The only time I use a, electricity obviously is when the heater is going to be running and with a smaller home, I won't be running that heater because I'm going to be changing out that old uh, heater system. I'm going to be putting in a newer heat pump system, a new heat pump system can save you a tremendous amount of money, a tremendous amount of energy, and, and it won't run, it doesn't need gas. It won't need PG&E natural gas for the heating. It'll be all electric. It's a reverse cycle pump, a heat pump. And so that's how 
Uh, if you just look up heat pumps, and, and those are the new and up and coming uh, technologies for homes nowadays. They're they're kind of expensive to start out with the setup at the initial uh, investment to, to get it in there installed and up and running. Or the other thing that I could do is take a slightly uh, lower cost way out and use portable heat pumps. And, and you see them all over uh, and you say, well, what are those? Those are the portable air conditioning units and uh, heating units that you see uh, for about anywhere from 800 up to $1,400. And they're portable. They have a, a heat hose that pumps the uh, expelled heat outside the window. And, and so these are, are the newer technologies that I would be incorporating into that home. And so uh, a $500,000 home, by the time I get through with it, could uh, I could be adding in a, another twenty five thirty thousand dollars $30,000 for all of these changes because I'm going to be doing a majority of the work myself. I am licensed and, and I have the authority to do that. And I'll pull the permits and, and everything uh, to keep everything legal. I, I did that with my previous home uh, down uh, uh, in the Grand Lake area, uh, had all the permits on that, updated that home and made it a, a truly one of a kind modern home. And so uh, right now uh, I'm waiting for the market to open up a little more. Uh, mortgage interest rates, uh, a lot of you folks are are really freaking out over the high mortgage uh, rates. This morning, I, I looked up a uh, 30-year fix, 30-year fix uh, interest rate on a $500,000 loan is currently going for 7.43%. So that's a significant number. Uh, back in, in my early days, uh, that would have been an acceptable uh, mortgage uh, interest rate. Uh, five to seven percent wasn't too bad, but also housing prices was significantly different than what they are today. Uh, and so uh, if you were able to uh, do payments for a, uh, only a 15 year, a 15 year loan at of $500,000 then your interest rate drops to 6.446 today and so these are while these may seem high to you uh, from old timers like myself you know, where we were used to paying between 5 and and 8% on our mortgage rate but based upon our credit history and also um, our income uh, but uh, that's not a bad rate. The worst rate that I, that I ever paid was 15%. And that was my first home. That was with the first wife with really bad uh, advice from everybody involved in there except my parents. My parents were the only ones who said I was stupid and insane to sign on the dotted line at 15% and that I should have walked away and I should have listened to my parents back then. So that's what is happening. I'm just waiting around for a little bit more time here. I want the, some listings, some new Oakland listings to pop up on the MLS and then uh, I'll be hitting the bricks, going to look at some of these homes. When I go to these homes to look at them, you'll be there too because I'm going to be uh, vlogging from that, those sites. I made vlog live directly from them uh, as we do a walkthrough and tour of the home, the yard, the property, and then also talk about the area because there's a lot of areas of Oakland that are very questionable and, and some are just downright dangerous because of environmental uh, um, issues uh, that surround the area. So East Oakland, I still want to live in East Oakland if possible. I don't have to. Uh, I also uh, don't mind going back towards uh, the lake where I had two of my homes, uh, Jean Terrace on Jean Street and then my Grand Lake home on Santa Clara. Uh, they were only three blocks apart. So I really liked that area because uh, that's where I grew up. That's where I spent a majority of my time. And that's where my family has always been. So thanks for joining me today.
hopefully we'll be seeing a lot of homes here come onto the MLS listings and you'll get to see the process as I walk through looking for my final home here in the near future. Thanks for joining me. We'll be right back.